Good morning, this is Eromel Magalas, your subject teacher for statistics and probability. For today's lesson, we're going to tackle about random variables and probability distributions. The birth of statistics is open dated in 1662 when John Gant along with William Petty developed early human statistical and census method that provided a framework for modern demography. He produced the first life table giving probabilities of survival to each age. The earliest book of statistics in the 19th century, Treatise Manuscript on Deciphering Cryptographic Messages, written by Arab scholar Al-Kindi, 801-873. In his book, Al-Kindi gave a detailed description of how to use statistics and frequency analysis to decipher encrypted messages. Early application of statistical thinking revolved around the need of states to base policy on demographic and economic data. Hence, it is thought etymology. The scope of the discipline of statistics broadened in the early 19th century to include the collection and analysis of data in general. Today, statistics is widely employed in government, business, and natural and social science. What I need to know After going through this module, you are expected to Number 1 is to illustrate a random variable. Number 2, distinguish between a discrete and continuous random variable. Number 3, find possible values of a random variable. 4, illustrate a probability distribution for a discrete random variable and its properties. And last is to compute probabilities corresponding to a given random variable. Before we proceed to the lesson proper, let us define first some of the terms we will encounter in this module. Statistics The word statistics actually comes from the word state because government have been in the statistical activities, especially the conduct of censuses. It is defined as the science that studies data to be able to make a decision. It involves the methods of collecting, processing, summarizing, and analyzing data in order to provide answers and solutions to an inquiry. Probability the probability is simply how likely something is to happen. Whenever we're unsure about the outcomes of an event, we can talk about the probabilities of a certain outcomes, how likely they are. The analysis of events governed by probability is called a statistics. Activity Activity is any activity which can be done repeatedly under similar conditions. Examples, answering multiple choice question, answering true or false question, tossing a coin. Sample space, the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. Examples, in answering multiple choice, the possible outcomes are A, B, C, or D. In true or false questions, possible outcomes are true or false. In tossing a coin, the possible outcomes are tail or head. Universe. Universe is the collection or set of units or entities from whom we get the data. Variable. A variable is a characteristic that is observable or measurable in every unit of the universe. Population. Population is the set of all possible values of a variable. Sample Sample is the subgroup of a universe or of a population. Let us now proceed to the lesson proper. Random variables and probability distribution. You have learned in your past lessons in junior high school mathematics that an experiment or trial is any procedure or activity that can be done repeatedly under similar conditions. The set of all possible outcomes in an experiment is called the sample space. The concept of probability distribution 
is very important in analyzing statistical data, especially in hypothesis testing. In this lesson, you will explore and understand the random variable. Before we discuss probability distribution, it is necessary to first study the concept of random variable. Lesson 1. Random variable. It is a function that associates a real number to each element in the sample space. It is a result of chance in an event that you can measure or count. It is a numerical quantity that is assigned to the outcome of an experiment. Please be noted that we will use capital letters to represent a random variable. For us to understand better the concept of random variable, take a look on these examples. Before that, here are the steps in finding the random variable. Step 1. List the sample space or the S. Step 2. Count the number of the assigned value in each outcome and assign this number to this outcome. Step 3. Make a conclusion. Example number 1. Suppose two coins are tossed and we are interested to determine the number of tails that will come out. Let us use T to represent the number of tails that will came out. Determine the values of the random variable T. Solution Step 1. List the sample space or the S. For this example, after tossing two coins, the sample space for these examples are HH or the head and head, HT or head and a tail, TH or tail and a head, and last is TT or tail and a tail. Step 2. Count the number of the assigned value in each outcomes and assign this number to this outcome. For the next step, we need to make a table. First column is for the outcomes or the sample space. Second column is for the number of tails as indicated on the problem that we need to determine the number of tails that will came out. Simply count the number of tails in the first column. And last, step 3, make a conclusion. We therefore conclude that the values of the random variable t or the number of tails in this experiment are 0, 1, and 2. Let us now proceed to example number 2. Two balls are drawn in succession without replacement from an urn, containing 5 orange balls, 6 violet balls, let B be the random variable, representing the number of violet balls. Find the values of the random variable B. Solution Step 1 The sample space in these examples are OO or 2 orange ball, OV, an orange ball and a violet ball, VO, a violet ball and an orange ball. And last is VV or two violet balls. Step 2. For the next step, we need to add or make a table. First column is for the outcomes. Second column is for the number of violet balls as indicated in the problem that we need to find the values of the random variable B representing the number of violet balls. Simply count the number of violet balls in the first column. Step 3. We therefore conclude that the values of the random variable B, number of violet balls, in these experiments are 0, 1, and 2. For more examples in finding the random variable, kindly open your module on page 7. Now, let us proceed to lesson 2, discrete and continuous random variable. A random variable may be classified as discrete and continuous. A discrete random variable has a countable number of possible values, while continuous random variable can assume an infinite number of values in one or more intervals. 
Here are some examples of discrete and continuous random variable. For the discrete random variable, we have number of pens in a box, number of ants in a colony, number of ripe bananas in a basket, number of COVID-19 positive cases in Hermosa Bataan, number of defective batteries. As we can see, the possible values for a discrete random variables are countable, full number, and have a fixed value. Let us now proceed to the continuous random variable examples. Amount of antibiotics in the vial. Length of electric wires. Voltage of car batteries. Weight of newborn in the hospital. Amount of sugar in a cup of coffee. Now, the possible values for continuous random variables are not countable, not whole number, and does not have a fixed value. For more examples for the discrete and continuous random variable, please use the link below. Now, let us proceed to the probability distribution and histogram for the probability distribution. In the previous grade levels in studying mathematics, we have learned how to make frequency distribution table given a set of raw data. In this part, you will learn how to construct a probability distribution. In the previous part of this video, you already learned how to determine the values of discrete random variable. Constructing a probability distribution is just a continuation of the previous part. We just need to include an additional steps to illustrate and compute the probabilities corresponding to a given random variable. Lesson 3, Probability Distribution and Histogram for the Probability Distribution Here are the steps in constructing the probability distribution and histogram for the probability distribution. Following the three steps in finding the random variables, here are the additional steps. Step 4. Construct the frequency distribution of the values of the random variable t. Step 5. Construct the probability distribution of the random variable t by getting the probability of occurrence of each value of the random variable. And last, step 6, construct the probability histogram. Let us put it in example for better understanding. We are going to use example number 1 in finding the random variables. We will continue it in step number 4. Construct the frequency distribution of the values of the random variable t. First, we will make a table. In the first column, you will put your answer in your conclusion in step 3. In the second column, you will put the number of occurrence or frequency in step 2, column 2. Now, you can total all the occurrence or frequency in the second column. Step 5. Construct the probability distribution of the random variable t by getting the probability of occurrence of each value of random variable. Copy the table in step 4 and add additional column, which is the probability. The value will be the frequency over total. For the total, add all the values in probability column. We can now write the probability distribution of the random variable t. The probability distribution of the random variable t can be written as follows. Now, let us proceed to the last step. Step 6, construct the probability histogram. We are going to use the values in step 5. 
and make a bar graph to construct the probability histogram of the given example. This is now the final construction of probability histogram. Now, let's take example number 2 in finding the random variables. We will proceed on step number 4. Construct the frequency distribution of the values of the random variable t. First, we will make a table. In the first column, you will put your answer in your conclusion in step 3. In the second column, you will put the number of occurrence or frequency in step 2, column 2. Then total all the occurrence or frequency in the second column. Step 5. Construct the probability distribution of the random variable t by getting the probability of occurrence of each value of the random variable. Copy the table in step 4 and add additional column, which is the probability. The value will be the frequency over total. For the total, add all the values in the probability column. We can now write the probability distribution of the random variable t. The probability distribution of the random variable b can be written as follows. Let us now proceed to the last step. Step 6. Construct the probability histogram. We are going to use the values in step 5 and make a bar graph to construct the probability histogram of the given example. Here is now the final construction of probability histogram. For more examples, open your module on page 13. Let us now have a recap. Random variable. It is a function that associates a real number to each element in the sample space. It is a result of chance in an event that you can measure or count. It is a numerical quantity that is assigned to the outcome of an experiment. We also have three steps in finding the random variable. A random variable may be classified as discrete or continuous. A discrete random variable has a countable number of possible values. While well, continuous random variable can assume an infinite number of values in one or more intervals. And last, we have six steps in constructing the probability distribution and histogram for the probability distribution. Now that we are done in the lesson proper, it is now time for you to do the assessment. Open your module on page 23 and answer the assessment section and additional activities. The following are the references used in this module and this video. Thank you for listening. This has been Sir O. Always remember, learning is not memorizing the exact words from the book. Learning is understanding it and being able to explain it in your own words. Have a great day!